Hi, this is John, and welcome to another video. And right here we have a 2017 Chevrolet Silverado Z71 with an off-road package. And in today's video, we're not gonna do a complete review. What we're gonna check out is the seat. This vehicle right here has around 20,000 miles, and we're gonna see like how the seat lasted. And I was driving this vehicle a little while ago, and maybe in the future I'll do a complete review and we'll check out the whole vehicle. But for now, we're just gonna check out the, uh, the front driver's seat. Stay tuned. So I'm uh, about 5'11", 185, 90 pounds. And I'm gonna go ahead and climb into this, into this. This is a really nice truck. So you got a pretty steep step here, so I'm just gonna climb in. And uh, you could see the seat this is all the way back. Now, my, my tippy toes are touching the, the front firewall. And if I put my foot on the gas pedal, I can easily, the steering wheel is a tilt and not a telescopic. So you would have to move your seat up and down. But I still find it where being all the way back, keeping my elbow on the center armrest, pretty much uh, I can hold the steering wheel pretty good. So I'm gonna bring the seat all the way up. So this, this vehicle can probably fit a guy who's about 6'5", very comfortable. And I'm all the way up. I'm gonna bring the seat all the way down and back. And, this, and the backrest reclines all the way. So let's bring it all the way up. And your visibility over the uh, the hood is typical for a truck like this. It seems like today, you know, they want to make these pickup trucks look massive, and uh, they make these big hoods. Rather than having good visibility, they're they're leaning towards uh, big, massive hoods. Because looking over this hood, you can't see anything like that's four, that's under four feet, pretty much. So if you're driving and somebody runs out in front of you or something is in front of you, you're going to have a hard time seeing it. And I did another video on a Dodge and it has the same problem. You know, maybe if the seat went up a little higher, you can get a little more visibility above it. Or they should put a camera in the front of the vehicle so you can see what's going on, you know, in front of you. Especially like potholes and stuff like that. Because, you know, technically, you know, you got to drive like... I, I would drive like like up so I can see as much of the road as I can or any obstructions that's in the way or somebody, a kid running in front of the car. Because you got to think about it. If there's two cars and they're parked together and you're driving down the street and you're not paying attention to the sidewalks or to the people's yards and you're just driving and some kid comes running out, you're not going to see him because you, you can't see over the hood. And a lot of these pickup trucks are like this. I think the only pickup truck that have that may have a little better visibility is a Toyota Tundra. But just a little bit because they have that massive hood as well. Especially like the Dodge, uh, you know, the GMC is the same as this. The Toyota, the, the Nissan, they all have these big hoods that you can't see. Even like a, a tractor trailer driver, they're up way up and they can they probably have better visibility than when you're in these trucks so let's let's uh, take a look at the condition of the seat after 20,000 miles so I have the camera at eye level and it's about eight inches in front of me so you could see how you see the hood and how high it is compared to the garage door it's at least four feet. So this, this gives you an indication on the lack of visibility you have driving this. So you have to be very careful when you're driving uh, a truck like this with this type of design where the hood is prominent like that to, to sit out or stand out and make the truck look good because the truck is a beautiful truck and it does look nice. But, it's, but it impairs uh, part of your vision. 
So now we're gonna take a look at the condition of the seats after 20,000 miles. So sitting in the seat, this is, this is like a $58,000 vehicle. The engine is very smooth and uh, it has that 4.8 option which works flawlessly. And I'm gonna go over that in another video. Just like the Dodge, I don't think the Nissan, Toyota, um, or any other pickup trucks have this feature that saves you a lot of gas because this vehicle is pretty good on fuel. So if you're doing a long haul and you're, and you're riding uh, empty, you're not hauling anything, you could be cruising on a highway with four cylinders and get up to what they, rec what they say is 18, 21 miles to the gallon. This truck right now is averaging around 14, 15, which isn't bad because when you stop at a light, the engine doesn't completely turn off. What it does is, it goes down to four cylinders, and you don't even it, you don't even feel it. It's just flawless. But uh, let's take a look at the front seat and see how that looks. So my only qualm is uh, is this part right here where it's all wrinkled. Now for fifty eight thousand dollars, you would think General Motors would put a leather seat in this vehicle. You know the fabric looks good. Luckily it's black because if this was a, a Hand fabric it would look terrible because you could see here the pleating that this uh, uh, in about 25,000 miles I think this is gonna rip the side bolster is in good condition the back part is in good condition just this part where, this, where you come in and out of the vehicle seems like it's in pretty bad shape you can see some staining over here but again, this is black, so it's gonna clean up easily. The other seat is comfortable. This seat already, like like I said, you know, I, I'm 185. I, I feel like I'm sinking already. And the person who owns this vehicle is pretty lightweight as well. He's not a, a very heavy guy. He's about the same size as me, maybe a little thinner. And I think that the seat um, should have held up a little better. This should be, this should be like top-notch fabric. That, uh, that, that should last the life of this car, and I don't think it's going to. And uh, GM should put better fabric in these vehicles because this is a work truck. You know, it's not like a daily driver where a car, or put, you know, super heavy duty vinyl seats or leather interior that's gonna last. One I have is, uh, you know, the range of motion of the seat, you know, it goes down, it comes up, it goes down and this back part here doesn't come up it just goes it just slides backwards and then it comes forward again and then you can go forward and back but it, the seat doesn't bring you up high enough again to, to see the visibility over the roof this is this is what I found to be uh, pretty much of a floor because you can see right here it looks like it's gonna rip like right in this area here and it's only 20,000 miles. This, this, this truck was, was purchased brand new. It is a good truck, but the seats, you know, should be a, a, a much higher quality. The type of use that these trucks are expected to get. The work clothes fabric being, being so tough and rough is gonna wear out the seat. And, um, and you're gonna have to go and replace the seat, which, which that shouldn't be. Cause I seen like a friend of mine, he had a, like an F series uh, van and the seat just fell apart. I mean, I think manufacturers should design their vehicles around seats because 100% of the time when you're in the vehicle, you're in the front seat, the driver's seat. So that seat should be number one priority for comfort. I gotta give General Motors, the seat is big. It has a wide seat, a wide back. You know, you don't feel like it's constricting or, any, or anything like that. The only problem I have is that it's very flimsy seat where you sink down and I don't think it really held up as good as it should have held up and uh, maybe GM should should address that uh, for the future or the current owners and see what they can do about you know putting some a little bit of better fabric in the seat well guys thanks for watching the video and I'm gonna catch you guys again when I do a complete review and um, we're gonna go over the GPS starting it uh, we're gonna ch try to check out the uh, how the eight cylinders go to four cylinders and we'll, we'll see if we can follow the fuel economy and it's, it's gonna be fun